Most recently, we've had many successes of the BDS um, uh, movement, uh, especially in Europe. Um, and I'll just mention a couple and I'll stop there to have a discussion. Um, Deutsche Bahn, B-A-H-N, which is the uh, railway company in, uh, owned by the German government, it was involved in a consortium building a railway between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And this plan for the railway was passing through occupied Palestinian territory in East Jerusalem, or villages near East Jerusalem. So we appealed, we pressured the German government to withdraw from this project because it violates international law, clearly. Our partners in Germany did an excellent work in pressuring uh, the, the German government, but we really never thought that anything could come out of it. I mean, this is Germany. It's as bad as it gets, worse than the US, believe it or not. As if anything can be worse than the US, it's Germany. It is the most difficult country to work in, as far as the BDS movement is concerned. The, the uh, Holocaust guilt has become the new religion in Germany. And together, in conjunction with it, total blindness to Israeli crimes. Israel can get away with anything, and Germany will support it from the left to the right. Recently, the left party in Germany, Die Linke, it trans trans translates to the left party in Germany, banned BDS. Its members are not allowed to support BDS. Its members are not allowed to support the flotilla. Imagine. Because both are expressions of anti-Semitism. Just imagine. I mean, even in the US, no one would steep that law. Even in the US. In Germany, the left calls BDS anti-Semitic. Uh, and of course, we're in communication with them. Soon we'll go public with our letter to them exposing their hypocrisy and their complicity. The left in Germany, not just the right, are complicit in Israel's, in everything Israel's doing to the Palestinians. It's not just the US government, it's the German government as well. And German society at large, totally, completely complicit. And what we're telling them is the Holocaust has not stopped. Its byproducts continue thanks to your support. To us, the Holocaust is not over. It's continuing and we're paying the price for it. We, our misery is the byproduct of the Holocaust, which you committed against your Jewish communities. We had absolutely nothing to do with it, but we're paying the price until today. And you're completely blind to our suffering because of your Holocaust gift, which has become a dogma in, in Germany and, and some other countries. So we're challenging that head on, and we have absolutely nothing to fear. Unlike white Christian Europeans, we don't, we don't get scared of the anti-Semitism charge. It doesn't stick to us, it doesn't work. And we don't have a history of anti-Semitism, other than the BDS movement being completely based on equal rights, human rights for everyone, regardless of identity. We don't have a, a, a guilt complex in the Arab Muslim world about anti-Semitism. We've never had pogroms or massacres against Jews in our midst for 2,000 years. We've never had that. It's not in our culture, we've never had it. Jews have always existed in this culture forever, forever, with no pogroms, no ghettos. There were never Jewish ghettos in the Arab Muslim world. Jewish civilization reached its epic, its, its, its climax under Islamic rule in Andalusia, Arab Islamic rule in Andalusia in Spain, what's now Spain. So not just that they were tolerated, they were able, Jews, Arab Jews, were able to reach very high civilizational um, achievements in the Arab world. Not that it was rosy. Of course, there were always problems. Of course, all kinds of issues come up between Muslims and non-Muslims and so on. But I'm comparing to Christian Europe. There's just no comparison. So we always tell Europeans, Westerners, don't export your guilt complex to us. We don't have roots of anti-Semitism that we have to account for. Any expressions of anti-Semitism, modern expressions of anti-Semitism in the Muslim and Arab world, and there are, of course, are direct results of Western exported anti-Semitism and Israel. They're not rooted. They're not culturally rooted. They're not inherent in our culture. And this cannot be said about Europe. We travel extensively through Europe. Even today, it cannot be said about Europe. Anti-Semitism is not a huge phenomenon because it's just simply, I mean, you would be very, very stupid to make any anti-Semitic remark in Europe today. Uh, it's not because people really are beyond 
racism towards others. But it's because those others have changed. You have other, another big other, the Muslims, the Arabs, that's the big other, African blacks. I mean, the, you have many, many others to hate and, and, uh, and channel your racism towards. Jewish Europeans become, you know, secondary others. They're not the other that, that we can hate. Today, it's completely legitimate in Europe to be as racist as you want against Muslims and Arabs. Exactly like it was in the 1930s. Exactly. History is repeating itself against different victims. Today, it's okay to make anti-Islamic remarks as they used to do in the 30s against Jews. Cartoons, the ugliest anti-Semitic cartoons are being reproduced against Muslims today in Europe, in, in civilized uh, civic Europe. Um, so going back to the, to the issue of why BDS has reached such level of success in many, many places, it is based on context sensitivity. In other words, it's not a dogma, it's not a uh, centralized movement where somebody orders and other people just do. Uh, everyone thinks, everyone creates, and everyone does. None of us are thinkers and others are doers. We all think collectively, we all create, and everyone does BTS according to their circumstances in their particular context. So some, some groups sometimes ask, what, give us a list of products that we can boycott in Arkansas. We can't give you a list of products to boycott in Arkansas because we don't know, we hardly know where Arkansas is on the map. I mean, it's not our job, we can't. You're the experts. If you live in Arkansas, do some research. You'll find the best targets. Companies that are most involved, most complicit in Israeli crimes, those would be your best targets. And of course, there are national BDS campaigns in the US like the TIA CREF, led by Jewish Voice for Peace, an extremely important campaign that the BDS National Committee, the leadership of the BDS movement, has endorsed, wholeheartedly endorsed. This is a very important, uh, uh, promising campaign that, that we encourage everyone connected with the health um, sector, with universities who might be connected to TIA CREF, to help this campaign. But there are many, many other campaigns. Just recently, we received a, a group of women uh, uh, of color from the US, a delegation of women of color. I, I, I'm not good at using that term. I never liked it, but it seems like it's, because uh, I never thought of whites as, as non-colored, and you know, the, the, the rest of us are colored. Like, white is the neutral, no color. Who said so? They're colored, just like anyone else, but anyway. So if that's the politically correct term, that's the politically correct term. So we had a group of women of color, uh, um, indigenous, um, African, Latino, and, and Latina, and others. Um, and it was such a wonderful moment, because throughout our experience in building BDS in the US, it was mainly the dominant cultural groups, white groups, not so much people of color. We have not done enough to reach out to people of color in the US, uh, to the indigenous people and so on. And this is, it's, it's high time we do this. And this delegation and similar delegations that we've met with uh, are, are building that bridge to allow us to do this because it's a two-way street. Solidarity is not just a one-way street because they have many, many problems as well that we have to be aware of and we have to stand in solidarity with in their own struggles against racism, uh, in the U.S., um, um, disenfranchisement, the prison culture in the U.S., and so on. There are so many very real issues um, that people might gloss over and think of the U.S. as this one monolithic, wonderful, uh, what is it called, Gilligan's Island, whatever. You know, that type of imagery, mythology about the U.S., unfortunately, many people think so because that's what they see, Hollywood. I mean, that's the image that comes across. Uh, you don't see all the other problems. So I'll stop here. There are many, many other examples of successes for BDS, but I'll leave that for the discussion just to take your questions.